Today we are on the Neretva River in Bosnia-Herzegovina. That is one of my very favorite rivers. This is a place actually where not many people have ever been. Maybe some shepherds, maybe some local fishermen, but no one else. It's very hard to get here. The whole upper Neretva is really a wilderness area that is unique of its kind. This hydropower plant Ulog will be operating and we would be here back again. It would be it would be completely different. So there would be very little water here during most of the day because they store the water, the inflow, they hold it back there. And if we would be maybe an hour later, they release a large amount of water, they flush it. So we could be underwater in a minute. And none of the species who live here, including softmouth trout or other trout species, will survive that. I will do my best to get a collective sample of the whole uh, aquatic invertebrate community, which gives you a good picture of the ecological status of the river. Since this is a near pristine uh, area, I uh, expect a high biodiversity, expect to prove and uh, broaden the results from last year, uh, which uh, showed that uh, there, there is a really uh, special community of, of uh, organisms here that show a very, very unpolluted and untouched uh, nature, which is a, a, a priceless thing to have and uh, it would be a great loss to substitute it with uh, dams and to stop the water flow, and, uh, which would completely change the habitat. And we just did uh, an electrofishing, uh, well, electrofish this area here, an electrofishing assessment. It was a qualitative assessment, so we are just looking for the species that can be found here and also for kind of the length distribution to see the demography of the population. Mixed species is the softmouth trout. Uh, we didn't catch it here, but here we are in the headwater section where the softmouth trout is rather living further downstream. This is a typical uh, demography or population structure in an in a untouched river, more or less untouched river. So nursery areas upstream and adult fish further downstream. The effect of the dam will be that the fish won't be able to migrate any longer and they will lose habitat due to uh, the impoundment. So usually you have to do an EIA, an environmental impact assessment, that checks what lives here and what would be the potential effect on these species and how can you mitigate it. The way they do it, they write a little paper and say nothing will be harmed. Mostly they write it's even good for nature if we dam it. And then they get the permit. You know, but if we bring exactly this to court, we can prove with the data that they are not even you know, fulfilling their duties, not the legal requirements. And very often, in many cases, we get, we get the right decision from the judges. And here on the Balkans, we have a lot of rivers that actually are in a very natural state. Um, so they're, they're prime candidates you know, to, to be put under protection simply um, to halt biodiversity loss. I think we always have this problem, no? that in environmental cases, very often we feel like, like, like David fighting against a big Goliath. No? Um, and, and I think this feeling is probably correct for, for pretty much everyone, as long as you fight alone, right?
in the last 11 years we have already stopped hundreds, hundreds of those dams. Um, and we had one major success in, uh, in Albania. There's one of the, maybe the, one of the last wild rivers at all in Europe, the Vyosa. And they wanted to build 45 dams on the river, Vyosa and its tributaries, and we stopped them all. And quite recently it became the first European Wild River National Park that protects more than 400 kilometers of rivers and streams as a national park. That's unique and we want to copy paste that for other rivers. For the future of the river Neretva, we will do everything also to make a miracle happen to stop the, the Ulok Dam. I'm absolutely convinced and I don't know, I don't know if we will succeed or not, you know, but you have to try.